Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at a new capture device that the folks from Aver Media sent to the show for us to check out. This is called their Extreme Cap UVC, and the way this works is you plug in a camera or a computer or a game console into the HDMI input here, and then on the other side is a USB Type-C port that you plug into a computer for capture. And what's cool about this device is that it works with their capturing software but it also works with just about anything else because this shows up as a webcam on your computer. And I get a lot of email from folks often looking for ways to connect their GoPro or their camcorder directly to their computer for uh, video conferencing or doing some vlogs or something. And this is the kind of device that will allow you to do that. Not inexpensive at $250, but there are some alternatives we have looked at before. And at the end of the video, I'll talk about this Magwell device that costs 300 bucks, as well as the Elgato HD60S that we looked at recently that costs $179. And I'll give you some recommendations as to what you might need based on your use case. Now, I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure that Aver Media sent us to the show free of charge. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. So let's take a very quick look at the hardware here. It is very solidly constructed. It is mostly metal. Uh, there's plastic on the ends here, but it really feels like a very rugged piece of equipment that might be useful when you're traveling, especially if you're doing a lot of on-the-road productions. It does have a USB Type-C connector in the back. The cable it comes with is USB-C to USB-A, which means the uh, larger traditional USB connector. So if you do wish to connect it to a USB Type-C port, you're going to need to get another cable. Not a big deal. They're inexpensive and, and available, but you will need to get another cable if your intention is to plug it into USB-C. Now, they do say that this will deliver raw video out of the HDMI port with no compression. So if you are connecting it to a game console, it's not going to do any uh, downsampling or other kind of conversion to the video before it delivers it over that USB port. It's going to come over as straight digital media, which is great if you are capturing, but that does require you to have a fairly powerful computer to get a really decent video captured at the full frame rate. So I did some testing earlier. I plugged it into a, a Dell i7 from about a year and a half or so ago with a little NVIDIA GPU built in. It was able to keep up with a 1080p 60 capture just fine. But if you are looking to do that kind of thing, I, I'm really going to strongly recommend you have a minimum of an i5 processor because I'm seeing tremendous amounts of CPU load when recording video at that frame rate. It's just not going to uh, reduce the size of what's coming through that port, which means you will need a pretty uh, powerful computer to make it all work. And if you do plan to use something like OBS, which we'll be checking out a little later in the video, you definitely need a powerful computer for that, especially if you're overlaying other layers of video. But I did notice that it does do well with webcam-like activities, even on lower-end hardware. So this MacBook Air uh, has a dual-core i5. It's probably about five years old at this point, so it's really not a super fast machine. But I use this here on my desk for making Skype calls and I often route uh, those calls through an HDMI ingest device like this one. I've been using that Magwell device that I talked about at the outset of the video. And this one seems to work just as well on here as the Magwell does. So let me uh, just show you how this gets configured. So I've got my uh, Skype configuration screen up here. I'll just go over to the audio video settings here. Right now I'm on my computer's webcam, but if I go over to the Aver Media USB device, it'll pop up now the HDMI input that's coming in and it's taking a uh, feed from my video production hardware uh, to get that over there via the HDMI cable. It's not slowing down the computer at all. It was able to make calls on Skype without any problems, so it seems like it is working the way it should work, and there's no driver required. I just plugged it in, and the computer recognized it as a webcam. And I also found it did a pretty decent job of capturing video, even on this low-end hardware as well. Now, we're going to do a 30 frames per second recording uh, using the QuickTime player, so I'm just going to go over here to New Movie Recording, and there's a couple things you do want to set up first, because right now, of course, it is using the webcam out of the top of the uh, computer versus the HDMI that I want it to use. So if we go back here to the uh, Mac screen and I pull down this little arrow here, you can see we've got an option for the Aver Media camera. So I'm going to select that real quick and that will uh, jump us back out to the Aver Media uh, input, which is coming in off of my video system. And I'm also going to go back to this view because I want to show you that you can also bring the audio in there as well. So if I go down here to microphone, you can see that Aver Media Extreme Cap is an option. So what this is going to do is bring uh, both the 
audio and the video through that input and we can get it working there. So I'm just going to click on record here real quick and I'm just going to start talking. Now what you're seeing right now is what's coming out of my TriCaster, but I am recording a video right now onto the uh, Max hard drive and what I'll be doing with this is uh, uploading it to my extras channel so you can see exactly what this looks like from a recorded QuickTime session. It does look pretty decent, although I am noticing that the audio sometimes gets out of sync. So what I'm going to do now is just click the stop button and uh, now we've got a video file that I can play back and I'm uh, not dropping any frames the audio does sound good although it is a little out of sync from what I'm seeing but uh, by and large it is a pretty good capture experience it is pegging the CPU under these circumstances so I don't know if this one can handle uh, 60 frames per second but if you got the decks cleared on the machine and just using it to capture I think you can get 30 frames per second out of it but just know you're getting uh, raw video being fed over that and not something compressed so you will see a pretty decent sized file when all is said and done so let's shift gears now and take a look at capturing from a game console console. I've got a Nintendo Switch now hooked up to everything and we're going to be taking a look at capturing some footage from it on this Dell laptop. Now this is a quad-core i7 laptop. It's got a GTX 960M GPU built in. So this is the kind of the target you want to shoot for for the best performance, especially trying to get 60p out or uh, trying to stream from it. And they do have some nice software here called ReCentral. It's very simple, no frills, but it does get the job done for you. So you can see here it detected our Extreme Cap UVC. I've got the uh, Nintendo Switch output here in this window. There is some options here for adjusting the recording quality. So you can have it at optimal right now, which is 1080p at 60 frames per second at 60 megabits per second. You also have some choices of codecs, and by default, it relies upon the NVIDIA GPU to do that transcoding for you because remember, this video is coming over raw and you do need to get it compressed somehow. So it's going to rely on your computer's hardware to do that compression for uh, final output, for example. And that is why uh, this hardware requirement is so significant for this particular product. Now, one of the things I liked about the Elgato product was that they had a very low latency mode where you can play the game on the capturing device with very little lag. It was pretty cool how well it worked. It wasn't always working, but uh, when it did, it was actually possible to play uh, most of the games pretty well on the same device that was capturing the video. In this case, you're not going to have the same experience. So right now I am recording here uh, and I'm also uh, running it full screen with the uh, Aver software. And you can see we're getting some lag here as it's trying to keep up with uh, writing to disk while it's also trying to display things on screen. Uh, we're also seeing a good amount of uh, button lag here from the time that I push the button to when something reacts on screen here. The recordings actually come out okay, but uh, you're not going to have a very good experience trying to play on screen. And one of the challenges you're going to run into, of course, is that there is no uh, HDMI pass-through on here. So you'll probably need to get an HDMI splitter, uh, run one of those HDMI cables out to a monitor, the other one through here. So this is probably not uh, maybe the best game capture device, even though it records at a very nice level of quality, just because it's hard to get a playable game without additional hardware going, and Aver makes uh, game-specific devices for that. But here you can see exactly what kind of lag you can experience. Now the video quality you're going to get out of the device will largely depend on your computer hardware, the codecs that you're using, the settings that you're using, because for the most part, uh, this thing is transferring over raw video that your computer is then interpreting through its software and hardware video transcoders. But you can see here some examples of some things that I captured. We've got some footage from that Switch game we were just playing with here, along with some footage I captured from my gaming PC earlier this afternoon. I'm also going to be uploading 60 frames per second versions of the those two videos so you can get a good feel as to uh, the overall video quality recorded with the Aver software uh, pretty much on the default settings with the NVIDIA transcoder. So pretty good stuff. It looks great and again you can tweak it to where you want it to go but there are some problems here and here's a great example of one. I don't know if it's just this game. This is the only place I've seen this happen uh, but this uh, Sonic Mania game now on the Nintendo Switch which just came out the other day uh, has a bit of a glitch here that is popping up not only in the Aver software but also in OBS. That's something that I haven't been able to figure out just yet. I have tried different codecs and I'm seeing that uh, every time in this particular part of the game. I also noticed that audio synchronization is getting off sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes. And I think it, again, could be probably something related to my uh, computer hardware not keeping up, but it is noticeable at different times and it's not always doing it, but it's something that I am noticing. So perhaps there's some tweaking that can be done in firmware or maybe they need to make some adjustments to the software. But at the moment, there are a couple of glitches that I am 
encountering with this that I haven't seen on uh, similar products that we've looked at. Let's take a quick look though at OBS so you can see how it might integrate with some other pieces of software. And just like the Elgato card, it seems to run better with OBS than it does with its own native software here. So we've got uh, the game running from the uh, Nintendo Switch, of course, in the background, and then it's overlaying my webcam here, hello, from the computer here at the same time, and it seems to be uh, doing a great job of keeping up with that. I'm also recording this and uploading it to my Extras channel so you can see uh, what this looks like as well. So good stuff here so far from uh, OBS. I'm also noticing, let me switch to the two-up view here, uh, there is less uh, lag here. There still is some lag, but there's far less lag with OBS than I was experiencing, again, with uh, the native uh, Aver software. So the Aver software does give you the ability to do some of this stuff, but I think you can really get a much better experience with OBS, which is free and uh, seems to perform much better on uh, my hardware here. So definitely take a look at that. So now let's take a look at some of the other options you have available to you here, especially things that I have looked at and reviewed here on the channel. I'll put a link down below to everything so you can get a feel for uh, exactly what each product does in a more detailed fashion, but I'll just give you the overlay as to what each one's strengths and weaknesses are. So the Magwell here was something I reviewed probably about a year and a half, two years ago. They've since made a revision of this hardware. Uh, what's nice about the Magwell is that it does have a built-in video transcoder inside of it. So if your computer isn't all that powerful, you can have this do the video compression for you and deliver a smaller uh, stream of data to your computer if it's having a hard time keeping up. This costs about $50 more, about $300. I did notice with the revision of the hardware that I have, this particular one, the audio did not sound all that great. It was heavily compressed and tinny. I think they may have improved it in the second edition, but I haven't tested that one. So if you do get uh, the Magwell note, you might have some audio issues on your stream. It may not sound as uh, close to the original as you might like it to sound. I'm not seeing any audio problems though uh, with the uh, Avery here as I've been testing it. Now the HD60S from Elgato is a lot less expensive. Again, this one only is about $180 or so. It also has steep hardware requirements because just like the Aver, it doesn't have any video transcoding hardware built in. It's relying on your host computer to do that for you. This one has a few advantages in that it does have the HDMI pass-through, so uh, you can put your HDMI in over here, get everything captured, but also run it out to a monitor so you can have a separate display hooked up to it while you're capturing your games. Uh, the software does have a lag-free kind of experience when you are uh, doing a recording, which was nice to see. It wasn't perfect, but it was better than what I've, what I've been experiencing here with the Aver. The problem with the Elgato, though, is that it doesn't work like a webcam, so it's not compatible with software that you would use a webcam with, like Skype and a few other things that we looked at earlier in the video. So if you want the flexibility, I think you're going to get a lot more flexibility with uncompressed video out of this box than you will out of the Elgato. But if you're just doing game streaming, uh, this will probably be a less expensive point of entry versus this one. It's just a little less versatile. And some of that versatility might be using this as a webcam with your Android phone, for example. So I've got a, a little app here running. I think it's called Camerify. That's one of these ad uh, infested things. But it does let you actually just plug this thing into the phone and use it as a captured device. So if you are out in the field, you know, maybe with your SLR, your camcorder, and you want to uh, capture some video or do a live stream, if, if it supports the external webcam, uh, you can just plug this thing in with a USB-C cable and uh, you're off and running because of that uh, UVC compatibility. It really is compatible with just about everything. So overall, I'm quite pleased with this from a versatility standpoint. I really do like devices that uh, can work without a driver installation, and that is what's really cool about this. You just plug it in, and whatever you have that works with a webcam, even on an Android phone, is going to work with this, and that is tremendously useful. I have noticed some glitches going on, though, especially with audio sync organization doesn't happen all the time and when it does happen it's not significant but it's noticeable and I haven't really found any uh, way to repeat the audio sync issues I'm having although I suspect it's probably related to uh, the software I'm using and the codecs that I'm choosing so I'm going to keep tweaking things a little bit to see what happens there I'm also concerned about that video glitch we saw with Sonic Mania I'm not sure if it's just limited to something that game is doing in particular but it's not showing up on my display when I have the switch plugged into an HDMI television for example so uh, uh, something is going on here and it just could be a weird interaction of the output from the switch versus uh, whatever the hardware in here is designed to do. So I'll ask them about that, maybe post an update 
uh, in the comment thread if I hear anything back from them on that. But this is one of those products where you do need to spend some time learning its uh, quirks and getting it working properly. You also have to tweak things based on what your hardware is capable of doing because it's not going to hold your hand. It's just going to give you that raw data and your software has to figure it out. But uh, just like the Elgato device, I had much better experiences using OBS or other third-party streaming apps uh, versus the ones that they provide for you uh, with the device. So definitely start there and use those versus the uh, out-of-the-box solutions that they might offer to you. So that's going to do it for the Aver Media uh, Capture device here. This is the Extreme Cap UVC, and this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Tangential Soup Podcast, and Chris Allegretta. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.